Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Marcel Plays RCT. After Diamond Heights we have now arrived at Evergreen Gardens, which for most people was the first time that Rollercoaster Tycoon became difficult. Nowadays the goal of 1000 guests in 4 years isn't so difficult anymore though, especially if you play it with all the improvements of OpenRCT2. To still have a challenge I want to see how many guests I can get with an actual proper park, so no microcoaster spam or flat ride farms. As usual the first thing that we need to do is build some stalls and a ride and then run all advertisements. This will be our biggest source of guest generation, but for a while we will also be able to get guests from the natural guest generation. For this the soft guest cap needs to be higher than the number of guests, so let's immediately start building coasters to raise that cap. At the start we only have the wooden coaster and steel mini coaster available, so let's start with the classic woody. The design of this is nothing complicated, just a few turns and twists before going back to the station. And by the 15th of March we have completed our first of many custom coasters. After having plopped down a haunted house and a twist it's time for a steel mini coaster which is again very quick and simple. It just has to be a decent coaster with decent stats. We want to make sure we get guests from the natural guest generation for as long as possible so it's vital that we build new rides as quickly as possible. Therefore I'm going to build a second wooden coaster before building another twist somewhere else in the park. It is not even the end of March yet and we've already built 3 custom coasters and with success as we get a message saying our current soft guest cap is 427 which is higher than the 300 guests we have in the park. One thing we need to do is make all the rides free. Since this is a Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 scenario we will not have access to the cash machine, so if we charge for the rides the guests will eventually run out of money and leave the park. To prevent that I'm making everything in this park except for the information kiosk and one ride entirely free. That one ride is because the advertisement campaign for free ride ticket coupons has very little effect if the ride in question is free and the info kiosk is because I ain't giving away umbrellas for free. To make money we will charge 60 bucks for the entrance which is 10 less than the minimum that guests can spawn with here so they should never run out of money. After a quick maze and a second steel mini coaster it's time for the first looping coaster which we unlocked near the end of April. It's a very simple double loop design which will be quite popular as everyone loves a looping coaster. To make it more interesting I shall reverse the trains which you can now do in OpenRCT2 with the click of a button on almost any coaster type. Unlike the proper reversed train types such as the 6 seater reversed wooden coaster trains this doesn't include increase any stats, so you can make your coaster seem more intense without actually having to worry about the intensity rating. We continue building rides and after the next looping coaster it's time for a car ride. Car rides are absolutely terrible but I want to have at least one of every ride type so we have no choice. A benefit of Evergreen Gardens is that there is already a lot of path pre-built making it easy to quickly build rides like this car ride anywhere without having to worry about overcrowding. Let's get the worst available ride type out of the way already as well, the boat hire. Guests will absolutely get lost without a track so unfortunately it has to be boring. Another month has passed so we have unlocked the next coaster type, the corkscrew coaster. Just like I gave the looping coaster two vertical loops, this corkscrew coaster will have two corkscrews in the form of a sea serpent roll element. With one final corkscrew we have now four different coaster types operating in the park. After having built a simple second corkscrew which is launched, the time has come to renew the ads, which is something we have to instantly do every time they run out. A third corkscrew on the other side of the park and a short launched looping coaster later, it is the start of July, which means half a year has passed. Let's take a look and see how far along we are. At this point in time we have over 1400 guests, meaning we have already smashed the 1000 guest goal and we're only halfway year 1 of 4. We did this with 22 rides, of which 11 are custom designed roller coasters. Together with the stalls these give a soft guest cap of 1691, which is about 200 ahead of the number of guests, so we still have that natural guest generation. 
Currently the park is way too spread out and doesn't really look nice, but that will go away as we continue building more rides. Speaking of more rides, we have unlocked the mine train coaster, so you know what time it is. We will build not one, but two very cool looking mine train coasters. I quite like this coaster type, it's sort of a wooden coaster light. It's not quite as bulky, but you do get the wooden support structure that we all love. At this point there is a problem though, and that is the park rating, which has dropped from 999 all the way to below 700. So I open the park rating inspector and we can see that this is caused by a whole bunch of guests being lost. It turns it turns out that the culprit is a small fence that blocks the right exit of one of the wooden coasters, trapping about 100 guests. With all the fences everywhere in this park, I wouldn't be surprised if this happened again. A few more custom coasters later we unlock the spiral slide, which is great as we can just dump 5 or so of them in random places around the park. This is a great way to quickly gain some extra soft guest cap and because the park is so large having 5 spiral slides is entirely reasonable. While building them I noticed that one of the default color schemes is new and uses the color tan which is one of the new colors. I would love it if more new default color schemes were added to open RCT2 as this is the only one I noticed so far in this playthrough. We're building right much faster than we unlock new ones, so we have no choice but to keep repeating coaster types. This corner of the park is a nice location for a third steel mini coaster. It's really great that the guests don't care at all that a lot of the coasters are very similar and they innocently ride them all with a smile. Then again, we have seen before that they'll even ride 100 identical micro coasters with a smile, so I don't think they even notice the similarity. At the end of August we unlock the ferris wheel which gets the same treatment as the spiral slide. Having a bunch of flat rides around your park really completes the look, it just doesn't quite look complete if you just have roller coasters. And the great thing about flat rides is that you don't have to spend any time designing them. Well, I could build pre-built coaster designs too, but that's boring. With a pre-built I wouldn't be able to have this looping coaster go underground and I also wouldn't be able to have a full 360 degree helix go through both vertical loops. Building custom coasters gives me so many fun options, such as putting the photo section right before the station so that the guests in the back of the train will only go through it at 6 km per hour. Another mine train coaster, corkscrew coaster and steel mini coaster later it's time for a miniature railway. There isn't much space on the surface anymore, so it will have to be mostly underground. While building the first station, we get a notification that the soft guest cap has increased to 3201, which is actually less than the guest count of 3240. When this is the case, the natural guest generation is reduced by a factor 4, which is very unfortunate, but there is nothing we can do about it. I just can't build custom rides quick enough to keep up. Halfway through building this railway, the first year finished, so let's take a look at our progress. We have gotten more than 3400 guests in just a quarter of the allotted time. If we continue getting guests at this rate, we will get to 10,000 in just 3 years. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, as we just lost the natural guest generation and we're probably not going to get it back. So far we have built 47 rides including 22 roller coasters, 20 custom designed ones and 2 shuttle loops. The park is getting fairly filled up, so it takes a bit longer to build new rides now, as space is harder to find. As a result of that we will probably never get the soft guest cap above the guest count again, but that's no reason to stop building, so let's continue with the newly unlocked go-karts. For paper ride parks the go-karts is pretty damn bad because of its low throughput, but since guests pay for the entrance here that's not an issue. A bit later we unlock the wooden wild mouse coaster, which is always a fun one to build. We shall construct one on the rocky hill and another one in the same corner as the red steel mini coaster. 
This one was quite fiddly to get right, but as we have already lost the natural gas generation, we can afford to spend a bit more time on it. We do still need right to keep all the guests occupied, so we do need to keep building them at a steady pace. At the start of May we have unlocked one of my favorite coaster types, the Stand Up Coaster. It has a very high intensity rating, but keeping that under control is what makes it fun and challenging. This very simple design with just two loops and the corkscrew already has over 9 intensities, so you do indeed have to be very careful and you can't build large designs, but I still love it anyway. In fact, I love it so much that I'll immediately build a second one. From one of my favorite coaster types to one of my least favorite, the steeplechase. I have decided I want at least two of every coaster type, so I have no choice but to build two of these as well. They're not actually that bad as we don't charge for the ride so their terrible stats don't matter. It's very interesting how dependent the goodness of a coaster is on how well it makes money while most scenarios in RST2 only have you charge for the park entrance. Granted it's still not great there as it only attracts 60 guests which is much less than the 95 and 105 of the looping and wooden coaster types but in this case that still doesn't matter. All we need in this park is some ride to keep the guests occupied, which a steeplechase will do just fine. A little bit later, it's bobsled time, which I don't particularly like building, as you have to be very careful for it to not fly off the tracks and crash. It's not super difficult to do, but it limits your design options, and in a park like this with very limited space, that's not a good thing. The bobsled is great for terrain coasters or for when you have a big open area available, but here it doesn't work very well. I'm still fairly happy with the end result though, it doesn't look too bad. During the construction of this bobsled we passed 5000 guests, which is halfway to the ultimate goal of 10,000 and we're only about 35% of the time in, so it's looking good. In July year 2 we get the launched freefall, which is usually a fantastic ride type, but here I think it may have done more harm than good in the end. None of their amazing stats matter as they're all free in this park, but the nausea still makes guests vomit and pukey parts are never good. The rest of year 2 was spent building more rides, including a boat hire with actual free rowing space, a second car ride, a bunch of swinging inverter ships and an underground path from the entrance to further into the park. Wait, that's not a ride. It indeed isn't, but it's still important. The entrance area was getting crowded, so I built this path to get them away from it. Guests prefer walking in a straight line, so lots of them will take this path and then they'll get dumped next to the shuttle loops. Abusing their incredibly simple AI is so easy and so much fun. After having built the newly unlocked spinning wild mouse and suspended swinging coaster, year 2 has ended and we are halfway through the scenario. The guest count is roughly 6700, which despite losing the natural guest generation is almost double that of the first year. This is because at the start of the playthrough the guest generation was still a bit slower as the park rating was still low. There are now 74 rides in the park, of which 33 are custom designed roller coasters. I'm pretty sure that I've never built a park this big this fast before and my hand definitely feels it. It hurts quite a bit from all the constant unending clicking to build track pieces, but it's all worth it, I hope. These rides only provide a soft guest cap of 4676, so we're definitely never getting the natural guest generation back. This is not a problem, as less than a month later we hit 7000 guests, and if you have more guests than that, your natural guest generation will be cut in four anyway. Whatever you do, from this point on you're going to have to rely mostly on ads to get more guests. Money is a bit tight now, so we can't afford the 12 week ad campaigns anymore. The 2 week ones are more efficient anyway, as the free week you get is a larger part of it, but so far I've been using the long ones so that I didn't have to renew them as frequently. With this little money in the bank, all we can do is build a bunch of flat rides, but that's actually fine as they are great at storing guests in their queue lines. Motion simulators, swinging inverted chips and topspins are all fine rides in a pay for entry scenario. 
At this point I thought it might be a good idea to save up some money for one final big coaster. In order to not just sit around and wait, I started recoloring a lot of ride to get rid of the boring look of the default color schemes. Anyone who has played the game a lot will be familiar with them and will subconsciously notice it when all the rides in the park still have those colors and will judge the player for being lazy. In August we unlock the first new water ride, the Log Flume. This is definitely my favorite water ride and the park will immediately be blessed with three custom designed ones. One on the front of the hill in the back, one right next to the park entrance which will make you wet when you enter the park and one next to the looping coaster with reverse trains. And why not add a fourth one all the way in the back of the park as well. After all we do need to give everyone the option to get wet. The time has now come for the biggest and baddest coaster in the park, a massive looping coaster. I'm making use here of the new large steep to flat track pieces for the first few hills and they look really good on the looping coaster. In total this ride will have 4 vertical loops of which 2 are penetrated by itself. I was going to add even more track since it has plenty of speed left but we kind of ran out of money so this will have to do. With a very big stature and almost 8 excitement this is truly the most iconic ride in the park. Right before the end of year 3 I noticed something odd. One of the wooden coasters has been broken down for a while and that's not because the exit is blocked but because the assigned mechanic is walking on the grass behind the station. I have no idea how we ended up there. Looking back at the autosaves he was doing fine on the 8th of August but 5 minutes later he was somehow behind the wooden coaster. I looked back at the footage to see if I accidentally placed him there or something but all I did in that time was build some log flumes. The coaster did break down on the 20th of August so I suspect that mechanic 8 got called to it and somehow phased through the station while trying to fix it or something like that. Anyway, at the start of year 4 we have 9600 guests and we still have the little green arrow that shows we're gaining guests rather quickly. We're already at almost 10,000 and at this rate we might even hit 12,000 guests at the end of the scenario which is more than I expected to be possible. There currently are 95 rides in the park and we have at least 2 of every ride type except for the miniature railway, monorail and maze of which there is only one. Let's continue and see what the final year brings us. A few months ago I started researching stalls so that we could unlock the balloon stall and the time has now come to build a whole lot of them all over the park. They're all set to sell random colors which is a great option if you want a colorful park but can't be bothered by setting the colors manually. I actually had the idea to do a lot of scenery work in the 4th year and started placing some trees in a corner of the park but trees aren't that cheap and we don't have a lot of money. Guest generation is slower compared to the first year and we need a lot more staff now to keep the park running so we have less income and more expenses. We're now halfway through April and there is a massive problem. We're losing guests and the park rating is no longer 999. A quick look at the park rating inspector tells us that it's because we have way too much litter. I suppose 60 handymen just aren't enough for this park so I panic hired 30 more. I also hired a lot of entertainers to prevent guests from getting unhappy while the mess is cleared up and hopefully keep as many guests in the park as possible. With all these extra staff members we're definitely not going to be able to afford any scenery. Dirty paths turn guests into vandals and predictably there's a lot of vandalism in the park which will all have to be fixed. It's not very expensive but it does take a fair amount of time to do. Even with all the problems fixed it takes a while for the guests to stop leaving and it takes until May before the guest count levels out at just over 9300. We had almost 9800 guests so we lost nearly 500 guests and almost a month of time. Suddenly the 10,000 guest goal isn't so easy anymore. The guest count does recover though and 2 months later we are back where we were so we essentially lost 3 months of guest generation which is about a thousand guests. During these 2 months I discovered that I was once again foiled by fences. 
This 3D cinema had its queue line blocked so guests couldn't access it and this car ride had been broken down for almost 2 years because the exit is blocked by a fence. God, I hate fences. Luckily it didn't trap any guests except for a few on the ride itself but those don't kill your park rating. Funnily enough, I did notice that the car ride had zero guests per hour right before I fixed the wooden coaster issue earlier, but since there were a few guests on it still, I just assumed it was unpopular. At the start of August year 4, we finally hit 10,000 guests, and it's absolutely glorious. Let's not celebrate too early though, as we do need to keep the guests in the park for another 3 months, and we have just seen that anything can happen. And things do indeed happen, as just two weeks later we have no money to renew the ads, and we absolutely need the ads. I didn't want to sell any rides, so I did the only possible thing and sold the 15 balloon stalls. It's unfortunate, but they have already served their purpose of making the park look like a rainbow vomited all over the guests. The rest of the time left is spent making sure that the pods don't get too dirty, fixing the little bits of vandalism that pop up here and there, and finally giving this top spin an exit line so that mechanics can fix it two years after it broke down. It's now the end of October year 4 and we have beaten Evergreen Gardens with 10,814 guests, which I believe is the highest guest count I have ever beaten a scenario with. The park is absolutely massive with 106 rides, including 35 custom designed coasters and 8 other custom tracked rides. This nicely shows that you don't need to exploit things like micro coasters or the pause button in order to make a ton of money and get loads of guests. It can be a whole lot of fun to play extremely optimized and I do it quite often, but you don't need to do that in order to build a massive park in a short amount of time. If you enjoyed this episode of Marcel Plays RCT, you can click here to see the previous one, where I altered the iconic dueling coasters in Diamond Height to give them over 10 excitement. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.